Hi, in this video, we're going to be going over how to use the TI-84 calculator or the Calculate 84 app in order to do a t-test. Now, if you already know how to do a t-test, but you've been doing it a long way, I think you're going to love this shortcut. If you don't yet know how to do a t-test, I'm going to be going over some of the steps really quickly, but you should go back to the full t-test video linked below. Uh, so that you can learn about assumptions and the hypothesis testing piece of the process. This is really focused more on getting that number and coming to a conclusion. All right, let's begin. All right, so here we have a school and the average of that school, the average at that school is 75 points. Uh, so we have that's the average for the overall population. And the mean in my class is 78.2, the standard deviation in my class is 6.5, and my sample size is 20. And so the question is, is my class doing significantly better than the school? So yes, you can look at these two numbers and see that 78.2 is higher than 75, but is it significantly higher? And so that's where a t-test comes in. So I'm gonna open up my calculator um, and so this is just one sample that I'm focused on. I'm just focused on my class. So in order to do this, my first step is to go to stat and then I'm going to go over to tests and my test is a T test. Now it's not a two sample T test because I'm only looking at one class. It's just a regular T test. So that's the second option. So I can press two or I can scroll down to two and press enter. All right, so once I'm there, I'm going to have to add all of these values and all of this information. So let's talk about what each of these things mean. So that mu sub zero means the mean for the population. So I'm going to get my 75 and I'm going to put that there. And it looks like this may have been the last problem I did. So this is the mean of my sample, which is 78.2. This is the standard deviation of my sample, which is 6.5, and this is my sample size. Now, this piece here is really important to understand what this means. So if I have a test where I'm seeing if there's any difference at all, so I'm seeing if there's any difference between the points in the population versus the points in my class, then I would choose the first option, the not equal to. If I wanted to see if I scored less than, or my class scored less than the school, I would use this one. Uh, but since I'm trying to see if I did better, so greater than that population mean, I am choosing that one. So once I have all of these things filled in and selected appropriately, I'm going to go all the way down to calculate and I'm going to press enter and it gives me some useful stuff. So. As I said, we're just going to be looking at how to calculate this useful stuff here and draw a conclusion. So this is the T value, which is useful if you're using a critical value table. We don't have access to one in this video, so we are going to use our P value. So there is a rule, which I'll write here. If the P value is less than the significance level, we reject the null hypothesis. I'll just write H0 for short. So the null hypothesis is a statement that says that there is no difference. However, the alternative hypothesis is the opposite of that, or the alternative hypothesis is what we selected when we had that little, let me go back there so you can see it. Um, really quickly all right so right here that is or alternative hypothesis so this is saying that or mean is in fact greater than the population mean because we are rejecting this or mean is greater so my class in this example is doing better than the school all right Let's look at a whole different type of example so you can understand the other things that the calculator can bring to the t-testing process. All right, so this question looks a whole lot different. Um, a researcher wants to compare the test scores of students who attended tutoring versus those who did not. And so we have the group here. These are the test scores for the tutored students 
these are the test scores for the non-tutored students. Now, we could actually go ahead and figure out what the mean is, what the standard deviation is for both groups and put it into this really horribly messy formula, but we don't have to. We don't even have to do it in the calculator, find the mean and standard deviation in the calculator. We can go straight to just doing a t-test in the calculator. So here is how. All right, so we're going to start again with stat, and we're going to go over to tests once again, but this time we have two samples. So we're actually comparing or two samples in this case. So instead of us going to regular t-test, I'm going to go to the two sample t-tests, and that's the fourth option. So I'm going to press four to jump to that. Now notice you can either enter your data or enter statistics. What does that mean? Data means raw data, like what you see here. Statistics means the mean, the standard deviation, the stuff that we entered before. So I'm going to enter data, but notice it says L1, L2, and I don't know what's in L1, L2. Perhaps those numbers are because I may have done it earlier, but let's check. And in order to check L1 and L2, we need to go to stat. It has edit here. We need to enter. And I did enter these numbers before, and for time's sake, I'm not going to clear it and enter again. But let's say you had other numbers in your calculator. To clear it, if you were using the TI-84, you would press clear and then enter. If you are using the same calculator I'm using, which is the Calculate 84 app, just press clear and those numbers should go away. All right, so enter your numbers in L1 and L2, then you go back to stats go back to tests again it is a two sample t-test so the fourth option make sure that l1 is in list one l2 is in list two or frequency list should both have ones all right and so now we have to go back to the question and see what the question is asking to figure out which one of these we select so it says to test at the one percent significance level to determine if there is a significant difference so difference means it could be higher, one could be higher, one could be lower. It doesn't matter which is which. So that means that we just need, need them to be different. So the not equal is the appropriate choice here. If the first list was smaller, then you would choose that one. If the first list you won was bigger or the first average was bigger, then you would choose this one. All right, but this is the one we want because it just wants to, there to be a difference. All right, so I'm going to scroll all the way down, make sure that's selected, um, keep it on not pooled, and then press calculate. And here we have our t-value. Again, we're not going to be using that because we don't have access to a uh, critical value table. We will be using our p-value. And so again, the rule is if p is less than the significance level, we reject the null hypothesis. And again, the null hypothesis says that they're the same. And that is what we are rejecting. Why are we rejecting it? Let's look at the calculator again. This number looks like it's 3.103. It's not. It's 3.103 or 3.104 times 10 to the negative 7. This is a teeny, tiny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny number. So that is absolutely less than the significance level. So we are absolutely rejecting it. These two averages are not the same. They are significantly different. And so that is our conclusion. Um, so our conclusion here, based on our teeny tiny p-value, is that these averages are significantly different from each other. And that's it. This saves us tons of time, tons of work, tons of heartache. All right, hope that helps.